said we will as Nicole said, we will uh, present the uh, our final report of the independent safety culture assessment uh, for PBF Energy Martinez uh, refinery. And was this presented to, this was presented to the community advisory board? Pardon? Um, the, the, um, this was presented to the oversight committee. Yes. When was it presented? Um, I believe, Nicole, was it August? Uh, no, the August presentation was for the public. The meeting um, that we had in May was for the oversight committee presentation. So just a quick reminder, we present to the oversight committee, collect comments, update the report, and then opened up a 45-day public comment period, which included an August uh, public meeting. So this Can I proceed? Oh, sorry. After the, the comment period was over. Correct. This is the updated report after that 45-day public comment period has ended and any uh, updates were incorporated into the report as a result. Right. Okay. Okay to proceed? Yes. Okay, great. So let, let me give you a quick uh, overview of our uh, objectives and approach uh, for this for this uh, work. And uh, on the left side of the screen, um, what we're trying to depict is where does a strong process safety culture come from? And, and basically, it comes from uh, the intersection of, of strong process safety management systems and strong uh, leadership driving uh, the execution of that management system. So if they're both strong, uh, the, the facility should have a and will have a strong process safety culture. Um, just a couple of other sort of deviations from that. If the management systems are really good, um, written very well, uh, very comprehensive, but leadership doesn't drive them adequately, then we would have a a system that looked good on paper, it might pass a, a, a regulatory inspection, but the culture wouldn't be strong. Um, and conversely, if leadership was all gung ho for safety, but the management systems were weak, um, you know, we would have something that maybe looks uh, good as a go good culture, but the results would be unreliable. And so when we do our work, what we're really looking for is situations where um, the, the refinery had systems that were kind of in those yellow regions. And to do this, we, uh, we uh, assessed MRCs, process safety management systems, both for their content and their quality. We also then assessed how the MRC leadership team ensures reliable execution of these management systems. Now, MRC had, pre had prepared uh, internally a, a culture survey back in the time frame of the incident back in November 2022 that uh, and that that survey work continued into March of 2023 2023 about a year before we started uh, our work um, but we were able to compare and contrast what we found to that culture survey and we'll talk about that as well um, we did uh, go into a great amount of depth in terms of reviewing the process safety management system documentation uh, and their key reports and metrics, uh, and also uh, by interviewing uh, the key personnel involved in the execution of that management system. So we, we came out with a pretty good idea of where their culture existed as of, uh, let's say, the first quarter, second quarter of, of this year, and that's what we're reporting uh, right now. Um, it's just a quick overview of our findings from the culture survey. Um, and they, they, they uh, fall into four different areas. The one has to do with how well MRC is a, as a learning organization. In a learning organization, um, when incidents occur or when near misses occur, um, the, uh, the company will find gaps in in management systems, close those gaps, and by doing so, you know, uh, move towards a zero, uh, being, being able to have zero incidents and prevent all future incidents. 
Uh, we also found gaps in, in the consistency of performance, especially dealing with the execution of procedures and, and uh, the deviations from those procedures. And I think you, you may recall that deviation from procedure was one of the causes of the, of the incident uh, back in November of 2022. Uh, and so the management of the way procedures are deviated from uh, was another area. Uh, in terms of uh, equipment reliability, uh, we also found some, uh, some findings there. Um, there are some aspects of MRC's asset integrity program, which are, are best in class, really. Um, but others, other systems uh, are, are, are not, but could easily be brought up to the, that, that same level of, uh, of uh, performance. And then lastly, we found a, a maybe a smaller item related to a sense of urgency related to closing uh, audit action items related to procedures. And, and in particular, these were uh, situations where um, you know, procedures really need to be corrected before the next use. Uh, and MRC would use uh, closure dates as specified in California regulations, uh, which often provided a lot more leeway. And that just sends a mixed, a mixed message on how urgent it is to close procedural action items. Uh, there are also a number of positive findings, and we believe that these positive findings from the culture survey will give MRC a great platform to build on, on and improve with. Um, MRC has a very strong focus on meeting their risk criteria. We'll talk about that more, and most of these we'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, they, they have a very important goal to reduce incidents to, to zero, and that's, that's kind of a, a basic starting point. Uh, we found that the refinery leadership team does have a process for review and oversight of process safety. And so including a few more items in their oversight will also help get them there. But the fundamental process was sound. Um, they have really strong management systems for pressure equipment mechanical integrity and interlocks mechanical integrity. These are strong. And by building the other mechanical integrity systems up to the same standard, they'll, uh, they'll be able to meet their, their uh, our recommendation there. Um, MRC has a strong emergency prepare, preparation and response program. Um, their operating procedure format is, is uh, meets uh, all um, best in class standards, and they have a very strong tur shift turnover process. Now, one thing I should mention that uh, is is that whenever we do a culture survey, we're measuring the culture at the time we went in to do the survey. And so culture does change over time. Um, perhaps this, the culture was not as strong um, a year earlier, and perhaps the strong, and hopefully the culture is stronger now. Uh, now that, that MRC has had a chance to work uh, on the recommendations that we made, but I will also mention that um, among all U.S. refineries that measure what's called Tier One process safety incident rates, this is a, a standard for measuring process safety incident rates, uh, they ranked fifth out of, out of more than 90 U.S. refineries. And that, that is, makes them better than many other refineries, but I also have to, to mention that their incident rate is not zero, and that's ultimately what we're all hoping uh, and, and striving to achieve. Now, we did take a look at MRC's culture survey and, and recall that that it was at least a year old by the time we had a chance to look at it. Um, their survey was designed to meet all of the county and California uh, requirements for doing such surveys. Um, the survey was overseen by both uh, professional staff and union representatives of the refinery. Uh, there were 62 questions uh, that were asked in the survey, and they were essentially scored or ranked from one, which is the lowest score, to 10, which is the highest score. The survey was carried out starting in November of 2022 and uh, concluded in, in March of 2023, and then the final report issued in April of 2023. Now, here's what we found uh, when we looked at MRC's survey. 
First of all, we found that their scoring method tended to favorably bias their results. So it gave them a little bit more rosy picture of their culture than, um, than, than what we believe was existing at that time. This is the same culture methodology that had been used in previous surveys, uh, also under Shell uh, in, in, in past years. Now, what we did is we took the same, the same information, but we used a more focused method that considered that only answers that were clearly favorable. So basically, if you if you were to provide a lukewarm response to a culture question or a negative response or, um, um, or, or no response at all, it basically says you don't believe that there was a, a strong culture. So we only looked at the ones that were clearly favorable. Um, and now um, with there were 485 respondents to this survey and a maximum score of 10 per question, that means that the maximum survey score for any one question would have been uh, 4,850. And as you'll see on this graph, there are quite a few questions that came pretty close to getting the maximum possible score, some, some pretty favorable uh, scores. And we'll, we'll talk about what some of those questions were in just a bit. I do wanna highlight those two black bars in the middle of the graph. Uh, these were two specific questions having to do with employees' perception of whether they were working in a safe refinery or, or a safe uh, workplace. And you can see that they're uh, not nearly as, as high as I think we'd all like to see. Um, but really, these are kind of lagging questions. Um, what, you know, th this is the oh, an overall perception, and the way that we change that perception is by working on the responses to the questions that have a less favorable uh, response. And those would be the ones that are shaded in, in, in red stripes on the right-hand side of the graph, and to some degree, the ones that are in the, the green stripes. So let's take a look at those red ones. Um, actually, let's look at the strengths first. Um, and these are, again, good things to uh, for the refinery to build on as they go to improve their culture. Um, employees uh, across the refinery felt that they had a personal responsibility and accountability for process safety. And this includes both the, the, the union and non-union and, and the leadership uh, of, the, of the refinery. Um, generally, the, uh, the, the, the workers felt that management reflects the safety values that they, that they say. So they, did, they do what they say they're going to do. Uh, they, they felt comfortable reporting incidents in near misses, and, uh, and employees reported that they felt comfort using stop work authority. And I, I, should, I should note that they use stop work authority. This is defined in, in California regulations, um, and um, which, which uh, I think is admirable in that California is the only entity that I know that has a stop work authority provision in their regulations. Um, but when we think about stop work authority as process safety professionals, um, our, our view of, of stop work authority goes a lot deeper than what the regulations say. And so as you, you'll see that there's a, maybe a tiny disconnect between this and what we what we end up finding uh, related to stop work authority. Um, now here are the highest leverage options, the ones that are in red. Um, pressure to get the job done. This showed up in, in a number of questions in, in that red area. Um, and some of the pressure came from workers themselves, some came from, from uh, management, some came from other departments. Uh, there are gaps in preventive maintenance, and I think that ties back to the finding, one of the findings for the culture survey that we're going to be talking about, uh, and also gaps in learning from incident investigation, which ties to another one of our findings and, and recommendations. Now, you can see there that there's about 10 of these bars, and I'm only giving you three um, opportunities, and part of that is because the survey um, so, uh, asks a lot of questions in two different ways to get consistent, to make sure there's consistency in responses. And the other reason is that there were some questions that we, we found would be 
uh, would have been an where it would have been answered a lot differently in in March and April 2023 24 when we did our culture survey than when the survey was done back in in 2022 to 2023 as COVID restrictions were being lifted back in those days uh, as you as I'm sure we all recall it was difficult for people to have face-to-face -face conversations to 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 interact in in group settings um, and things like that which are very very important in terms of driving uh, process safety culture and so anything that that seemed to be affected by by that kind of situation we kind of set aside and I think it'll need to be reevaluated at, at a future date so at this point I'm going to turn the floor over to Kenan who's going to complete the presentation talk about the work we did with a management system review um, Kenan if you can unmute and proceed can you hear me, Scott? I can. Okay, good. Um, well, uh, first, let's do a little bit of background on the management system review. Um, the Martinez Refinery follows the risk-based process safety, process safety management system, as defined by the Center for Chemical Process Safety, and uh, that's what we actually audited them uh, against. Um, this, this management system does cover the traditional elements of ISO, Cal OSHA, and Cal ARP in, in many ways. Uh, plus, it has a few other elements that really deal with leaders and driving the culture. And, and those specifically are compliance with standards, you know, both design and operating standards, as well as legal standards, process safety competency of all roles from the uh, top of the refinery down to the operators, um, also gets into conduct of operations, making sure that we are planning our work and then working that plan, uh, whether it's, it's uh, our procedures are always up to date, accurate and being utilized in the field. Um, and then management review and continuous improvement. All of these ISO based management systems are set up around a plan, do, check, act, continuous improvement cycle. And certainly that's part of our assessment is to make sure that that type of activity and push for continuous improvement is is happening. So next slide, slide please, Scott. Um, Scott talked a little bit about the opportunities uh, already, but we'll go into a little bit more detail and uh, look at the recommendations that went with those opportunities. The first one dealt with the incident investigation process and making sure that we're a learning organization. Uh, the current investigation process really is not designed to prevent future incidents, which is, that's the whole intent of an investigation process. So the first recommendation was to upgrade that investigation process for both uh, actual accidents or incidents as well as near misses and to ensure that the investigations continue beyond, beyond the identification and correction of human error and mechanical failures to get to the actual root causes, which is the management system gaps and weaknesses. All of these safeguards are part of are governed by a management system that the intent of the management system is to be able to verify on an ongoing basis through monitoring and metrics that those, those barriers are fit to serve. Uh, so, our, for, so our investigation process has to get to the management system failure of each uh, uh, direct cause failure. Um, obviously, we need to train people on changes to the improved process and begin using it. And then to establish a new program of retroactive repetitive incident analysis where we're looking for repetitive management system failures of the same type that happens in an incident and uh, make sure that we correct the management system at the right level within the organization, whether it's in a unit, a plant, or across the entire site or across the entire company. Um, there's some timing recommendations that went with that and the uh, refinery agreed with those uh, the recommendation and the timing for completing that. Next slide, please, Scott. The second one uh, dealt with unreviewed procedure deviations, including the use of manual control, which uh, the, that management system failure is one of the direct causes of the incident that uh, really started this entire process. So the first recommendation dealt with establishing a procedure or policy that sets clear limits, uh, both the situation and time on changing control modes from cascade or automatic to manual. And if you exceed some, any of those limits to establish some sort of professional review and approval 
of the deviation or trigger a temporary management of change. Now, al along with that, that would be built into this and any other procedure use deviation process, it needs to include where appropriate, how the process is gonna be monitored for possible impacts, any triggers for action, and what interim controls might be needed while a deviation is in progress to make sure that we, we have full control of the situation. Uh, alternatively, where appropriate, a deviation request could be referred and processed through the emergency, temporary, or permanent manager change process. Then, of course, like any other um, uh, safeguard or barrier we put in place, we really need to have metrics and methods to monitor and track when we are in this situation and include a regular review of that with our refinery leadership uh, and their cadence of reviewing process safety management system elements to ensure that um, we are applying the plan, do, check, act principles and continuously improving the process. And uh, again, the, the refinery agreed with the recommendation and the timing, and you can see the, the, uh, the timing for that is the end of this year. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> as Scott talked about, they have some really first class uh, mechanical integrity programs for some parts of their process. There's other parts of the process they need to bring up to the same level of, uh, of standard, and that specifically would be the electrical equipment and rotating equipment. And, uh, and, and of course, we need to establish a process for that where the appropriate functional leaders track that performance and either correct gaps or escalate them to the refinery leadership when, when those issues arise. And, and same as with the other two, the uh, timing that was recommended to be done by the, uh, the, as you see here, December 31st, 2024, and the refinery agreed with the recommendation and timing. Um, the next one is, as Scott talked about, uh, we, we had some issues that came up specifically around procedures where there was overly long completion date. Certainly the intent of uh, any management system would be if we, if we find a procedure problem, and we're not talking about typos here, but uh, you know something that really deals with material issue with the procedure, it should be fixed before the next time the procedure is used. And so um, uh, even though the legal requirements allow a, uh, a certain amount of time to correct these things, we think a, a much more appropriate in the intent of any management system would be to correct that before its next use. So uh, the, the, uh, the, the refinery again agreed with that, with that finding and, and is uh, changing the policy, has already changed the policy. Next slide, please. Um, the other opportunity was to actually move up the timing ahead of schedule for the next uh, cultural survey and confirm that any uh, survey impacts that were attributed to the COVID era limitations have been resolved and in include these items in the cultural assessment. And uh, you know they're, they've committed to doing that by September 30th, 2025. Um, again, you know to reiterate what Scott uh, talked about, they are doing a lot of good things already. They have a strong culture in many areas that they can build on and will help them. You know, the first being that they're, they're, uh, they really are trying to live the plan, do check at continuous improvement and meeting their risk criteria, which uh, goes above and beyond regulations in terms of determining how many and how robust of safeguards or protection layers are in place. They have the proper focus on eliminating any incidents and then trying to aspire to get to zero process safety incidents. Um, the refinery leadership team, again, they have a regular cadence of, of doing that plan, do check, act, and review and seeing where they need to improve. And, and, uh, and, and that's another important point that is this whole place, this whole process can be built on. Uh, we talked. We just talked about the management systems for pressure equipment and interlocks, and the emergency preparation response process is very strong. Their operation, their operating procedure format, it meets best practices, and they have a very good shift turnover process. So there's a lot of positive things they can build on. Next slide, please. Uh, I guess over there was uh, five public comments were received. There was one clarifying change made to the report. That didn't affect any findings. And uh, uh, Scott, I'm drawing a blank on what that was. I, mean, I just uh, got off a plane here a few minutes ago and, and, and I'm over in Oman in the Mideast. So. 
<laughs> right. I think I think they were uh, looking for um, basically there was a, a, a paragraph that was confusing um, or they felt confusing. And we, we clarified that that paragraph. Uh, it wasn't a material change, but it but it did help the report read better. And I believe that's it. And we thank you for your attention. Happy to take questions. Great. Thank you. Um, Federal, do you have any uh, comments or questions? Yeah, um, I, I appreciate this this report. It seems like that uh, there's uh, some changes that's put in place and that they are agreed upon by MCR. My question is, in terms of monitoring to make sure that those changes is in place, what is our process going to be? Yeah, thank you, Supervisor Glover. So uh, the Hazardous Materials Division will have our engineering team working really closely to check up on the implementation of these action items to ensure they are completed by the due date and meet the intent, um, not only for the safety culture assessment report, but also for the incident investigation report that was also done by Scott Berger and his team. Okay. Um, and then there, there's some things that is are gonna be completed by end of year. And it looks like the others are extended out until September of next year. Uh, am I correct? In that is correct. Okay. Hey, that's all I have, John. Okay, why don't we go to public comment first. Is there public comment on this item? If you'd like to make a public comment on this item and you are joining us via Zoom, please raise your hand. You will be given two minutes. I do not see any hands raised for public comment. Um, now I'll check in the uh, EMS room. Is there anyone there who would like to make a public comment? No public comments here. Thank you. And so can you talk about the follow-up health department's role and the follow-up to these results and ensuring that um, the refinery implements them? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of next steps after this. Uh, we are going to be having a report out to the city of Martinez for both uh, the incident investigation and safety culture assessments on November 6th. Afterwards, the uh, division will be setting up meetings um, as needed to work on ensuring the implementation of these action items by the December 31st due date and then again uh, for the 2025 due dates uh, to track the progress and completion of the action items and also to ensure that what MRC is implementing meets the intent of the action items. Um, these will be documented internally. We uh, will also be continuing to follow up through our normal audit processes on the progression of these action items um, as we go through our triannual audit. Got it, okay. Federal, you have anything else? I did, just to say that I know that this has been a tedious process and I really appreciate the participation of everyone involved in this and for MRC to, to seem like own the responsibility of, of these actions that's gonna be taking place. Um, I really would wanna make sure that uh, this committee receives all of the reports and actions that that are taking place and that they we can um, devise a checklist so that as they come up that there's a report out to the not only this committee but to the community understood we will work um in the division to develop a process to do that and we will continue to bring updates to this committee as well okay thank you thank you hmm. all right with that we are adjourned Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody.